Most of the time you hear people talking about, does this break a fast? Can I still have this or that? Can I have this small piece of almond during a fast? Or this massive kale smoothie? Kale, yeah. If you are confused about what breaks a fast, then check out this video about the things that don't break a fast. So make sure you subscribe for future videos about deciphering optimal nutrition, intermittent fasting, and biohacking. What I like to say is that what counts as breaking a fast depends on what you're trying to do with the fast, what are your goals, what's the particular situation, and how long you've been fasting for. Here are the three biggest things things that promote the health benefits and fat loss benefits of fasting. Ketosis is the metabolic state of elevated ketones in the blood. This promotes fat burning, improves mitochondrial function, gives you energy, has neuroprotective effects on the brain, reduces inflammation and makes you feel awesome. Autophagy is the mechanism of cells eating and recycling themselves. This removes waste material, reduces inflammation, promotes longevity, improves brain function and overall health. Hormesis is the body's adaptability to environmental stress. It triggers pathways like AMPK that promote both ketosis and autophagy. Triggers fat oxidation, governs the adaptation to physical exercise, and makes you tougher both physically and mentally. If you're fasting for just fat loss, body composition, or just productivity, then your approach to the fasting window will be completely different from someone who is fasting for treating some sort of a disease. So, in the rest of this video, I'm gonna tell you what doesn't break a fast the things that you can safely consume without worrying that they're going to interfere with the health benefits of the fast. I'm gonna start with apple cider vinegar because it may be somewhat confusing. So, does apple cider vinegar break a fast? Apple cider vinegar is an acidic beverage that promotes ketone production and suppresses insulin. That will check off all the three conditions for fasting as it even supports autophagy to a certain extent. Drinking some apple cider vinegar mixed with water will lower blood sugar, stimulate AMPK, autophagy and promote liver health. The liver is the central ground where all nutrient signaling takes place. A fatty or dysfunctional liver will probably take a longer time to get into autophagy as well as ketosis. So that's why apple cider vinegar regularly is pretty good. Now, it is true that there are some strands of proteins inside raw undistilled apple cider vinegar like Bragg's. They're basically proteins and amino acids that technically could turn off autophagy. But I think that the amount of them is so small that it doesn't really matter. And uh, when you look at the liver health promoting benefits of apple cider vinegar, then I think that it kind of balances itself out. So it's still worth it. There's also the thing that it can promote gut health, which is definitely more important for stimulating autophagy and making sure that you actually activate it. If you want to be 100% safe, then you can drink the distilled version of apple cider vinegar that doesn't have the mother and it doesn't have any bacteria. And then when you're about to break the fast, then you take the apple cider vinegar with the mother as to promote digestion and, you know, kind of break the fast safely. But in general, apple cider vinegar doesn't break a fast as long as you stick to just a few tablespoons. Now, I know what you're thinking. Does coffee break a fast? The answer is no. Coffee is not going to break a fast. It's not going to stop ketosis and it's not going to stop autophagy either. In fact, the polyphenols in coffee can actually stimulate autophagy and even promote ketone body production. The same applies to teas that have polyphenols like green tea. Some people say that just because coffee is going to stimulate liver enzymes and trigger digestion, then it's going to break the fast. But if that were the case, then the same would apply to things like salted water and even regular water because they, those things, they have minerals and they will stimulate your digestive tract. So if you want to be completely safe, then avoid anything. But coffee stimulates autophagy, so it's perfectly fine. But what about adding some fats like butter, heavy cream or coconut oil? Does bulletproof coffee break a fast? Ketone bodies do stimulate treparomediate autophagy and macroautophagy in the brain, but ancestrally that happened primarily during starvation. In the modern world that can be replicated on a ketogenic diet and adding a little bit of ketone boosting fats to your coffee like MCT oil. It is true that fat doesn't spike insulin the same way carbs or protein do, however too many calories from fat will still break a fast by raising mTOR and insulin. That's why the most you can get away with is maybe one teaspoon of ketone boosting fats like MCT oil. This is where you have to know what's the purpose of your fast and what you're trying to do with it. If you're just trying to lose fat and drinking bulletproof coffee helps you to get through the fast for longer, then it can be said it's worth it as long as you still maintain at a caloric deficit. But if the bulletproof coffee is making you overconsume calories, then it's not worth it and it's actually going to jeopardize your results. The same applies to autophagy. If you are trying to maximize the benefits of autophagy, then I wouldn't add any fats to your coffee. God damn! There's conflicting information about artificial sweeteners and whether or not they're safe for consumption. But what we want to know is do they break a fast? A recent review on low-calorie sweeteners 
concluded that they don't seem to have any effects on insulin. However, there are studies showing that things like sucralose and saccharin can raise insulin in some people. Now, artificial sweeteners, they wouldn't be a problem if your goal is just fat loss and ketosis. Even if they do raise your insulin, even if it's just like placebo insulin, then it doesn't really matter as long as you still stay within a calorie deficit by the end of the day. But we don't really have data about how they affect the microbiome and how they affect autophagy. So if you were, if you were to be safe again, then just avoid them. But in most cases, maybe drinking like a can of Diet Coke or a pre-workout, it doesn't really matter. And the amount of artificial sweeteners in them is also so small that the health outcomes are also somewhat insignificant. Now, some people can't go any days without drinking their Diet Coke, and some people can't go any days without taking their supplements and multivitamins. But do supplements break a fast? Electrolytes like sodium, potassium, and magnesium are not gonna break a fast. Even if a magnesium pill has a bit of gelatin, maltodextrin, or rice bran, it's so small that it doesn't matter. Things like omega-3s, vitamin D, vitamin K and others are usually combined with a bit of fat like olive oil or MCT oil. The amounts are also very small and they won't interfere with ketosis nor autophagy. All the multivitamins, vitamin C, B complex and so on are usually bound with some bulking agent like cellulose. The amounts are again so small that they don't matter. Probiotic supplements will probably affect the microbiome in some way but it's probably not gonna break a fast, nor autophagy. Generally, it would be better to take a probiotic supplement on an empty stomach and before eating. Fiber supplements like psyllium husk probably won't be a problem either as long as you take like one teaspoon, but at the same time, it's completely unnecessary. BCAs, essential amino acids and all others have protein that will break the fast and stop autophagy. They affect nutrient signaling on a more visceral level than fats or other compounds. Even if you're trying to lose just fat, BCAs aren't the best option because they'll kick you out of a fast state and thus make you more prone to muscle catabolism. It's always better to stay in deeper ketosis and autophagy while dieting as to protect against muscle loss. It's a trap! Ketone salts and esters have a ton of electrolytes, ketone bodies and some artificial sweeteners. They can actually shut down the liver's endogenous production of ketones and inhibit lipolysis. But they're probably not going to stop autophagy. Medicinal mushrooms like reishi, chaga, lion's mane, cordyceps and turkey tail are potent adaptogens and anti-inflammatories that activate autophagy. Usually people consume them as tinctures, powders or teas, which are all not going to break a fast. Anti-diabetic drugs like rapamycin and metformin won't break a fast because they lower insulin and promote autophagy. There are several herbs and spices that can boost autophagy like turmeric, ginger, berberine, ginseng, galangal and cayenne pepper. Again, one teaspoon is probably the most you can get away with. All of these compounds and supplements, they work in a dose-specific manner when it comes to breaking a fast. Of course, one to two teaspoons isn't gonna break a fast, but if you start adding like 50 calories, 100 calories and so on, then eventually it's will gonna stop autophagy and kick you out of a fast state. So everything as little as possible. The most important part is to remember why you're doing fasting for, what you're trying to do with it, and what's your goals. How long you've been fasting is also quite important, because the longer your fast has lasted for, the more you can get away with things because you're deeper in autophagy and deeper in ketosis. If you want to know how to fully optimize intermittent fasting and nutrition for longevity and body composition, then check out my Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass. It comes with a unique list of foods that affect fasting more than others and guidelines on when to eat them for maximum results. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay autophagic, stay empowered. This is some serious gourmet